20 years ago this month, I enjoyed one of the biggest sports thrills of my life, caddying for friend and Billings native Leslie Spaulding in the Women's British Open. That was at Royal Litham in St. Anne's outside of London. She finished sixth on a trip that almost didn't happen. She got in as an alternate, and I had dangerously short notice. You leave me a voicemail in a British tone saying, hey, you want to go to the British <laughs> Open? I got in. I need a caddy. And I freaked. Didn't have a passport. Oh, I mean, my God. And it arrived literally a day before we flew out. I have a bad memory, but I re just remember walking down the 18th and knowing that I played my best golf and laughing with you. Because yeah. to me, like the, a huge part of being able to play good golf is being able to laugh and be light. And I'm an intense competitor. I want to win. To keep me light was something that you did great for me, but I just remember actually getting the job done for the first time in my life of finishing sixth yeah. and not like freaking out and playing bad the last day or something like that. We won't go through all this of that. So I've only funny. got like 30 pictures probably, but... Um, There's Annika. You got yeah, Annika. I did. So you can go through... I remember wearing that sweater. Do you? Yep. Sayree. Yep. I just had full control of my golf game then, and I could play all the different shots that were necessary. And that was what was so fun about playing that golf course, because I hadn't played a British before, but I, I knew my game and I had a very complex game. And so it was the first time I could really be super creative with golf. And I remember hitting fade drives and draw drives according to the wind and just doing different stuff and um, having so much fun. This was your caddy book. I mean, some of the notes Oh my God, there's money in there. Yeah, I left it like a couple of euros. Yeah. Now on the tee, Leslie Spaulding. Blonde-haired American girl that gets in as, a, uh, as an alternate, unknown to many of the people over there, and you are up on top of the leaderboard, and as you're walking down the fairway, and I was inside the ropes, I mean, people are just cheering for you, and the better you played, the more they became aware of you, and it was just awesome. I mean, do you remember that? I don't you remember don't. that. How do you not remember this stuff? You're so into your game. There's so many details with golf. Yeah, I remember walking the fairways and like, you know, smiling and waving or whatever, but I don't remember having people actually cheer for me. That's what I'm talking about. Your mom definitely took that and they're watching you come up. Yeah, they're watching me. They were, they, were, they weren't out there to see Soren Stamp. So I'm a first time caddy out there and I roomed with some other caddies and I'm like, hey, I'm a sports caster. I'm the new guy, I'm not a caddy. You guys have any advice for me, you know? And they're telling me, oh yeah, never talk to another player's ball. Never say good shot until the ball comes to a rest. What were your thoughts on playing in your first British and having, having the new guy who'd never really caddied at that level before out there? To me, so much of having a good caddy is the attitude that the caddy has. And if the, there were a lot of times I'd, I'd have a caddy that would get negative if I had a bad shot. And having a positive person next to you is what it's all about. Yeah, even when it was blowing 50 miles an hour and I'm yelling at my mom to go in because it's so bad, yeah. that's one moment that sticks out with me is yelling to my mom saying, go in, and then laughing with you down 18 going, oh my God, I'm laughing on 18 and he doesn't have a bad attitude about this weather. He loves it, he relishes it. And that's the kind of attitude you have to have in that kind of weather is one that relishes that opportunity. Number one T. Yep. R3, I think, isn't R3, it? R3, yep. Five iron. Was that after the tournament? I don't remember if it was a practice round or after, but I didn't wear glasses then. You were on the 13th hole on Saturday, and I looked up at the leaderboard, and you had sole possession of the British Open lead. And I wasn't about to tell you that, but I looked up, and I don't know if you knew it then. I don't remember that, but I do remember that we were in the last group, the last twosome, and the caddies were all betting on the twosome because you could do that over there. You could make bets on who would beat who in the twosome, and they were all betting on Brandy Burton, every single one of them, and they all lost. Huh, really? <laughs> yes. I didn't know that. My mom overheard them talking because they didn't know who she was, and yeah. so they were saying, oh, Spalding's not going to do it, <laughs> so we're going to you know, bet on Brandy Burton. A lot of money lost that day. By the way, that sixth place paycheck was just over $27,000. She remembers her take home is about $17,000.